And welcome back to Let's Play Disgaea, Hour of Darkness. So, quite a few changes since last time. First off, I got Flan uh, practicing her magic, so now she has a much greater array of spells. From the basic level of the elemental spells to the mega level. Plus a uh, magic boost, a buffing spell that increases your intelligence. I also got her heal, so now she can uh, heal from a distance rather than just relying on power of love. Although power of love heals about twice as much as a uh, regular heal does, so if I get into a situation where power of love is more useful, I will of course be using it. New to our team is Fu, a Ronin, and the unlockable class you get for having a female warrior who's level 10, and a female brawler who's level 10. And Ronins are far and away one of the most powerful basic classes in the game. Actually, I'd say they're the most powerful. I mean, just look at that. S ranks in sword, spears, and axes, and a 110% aptitude for attack. Very good, almost twice as good as the default warrior classes, and they gain weapon experience really quickly. As you can see, she's already at axe level 5. Part of that is because I had her build up her axe level with the arms master I created, and uh, part of that is just, you know, she gets at. Uh, axe experience really quickly, so when I was bringing her levels up to speed, she got additional experience. Another new team member is Spike, a ninja. A ninja is the character you get for a level 10 male warrior and a level 10 male brawler. And ninjas are a very good class, specializing in the speed stat. They have, step for step, the highest speed of the basic classes in the game making them able to dodge hits very well. They also have the highest counter, they can move 6 spaces, and they can jump 25. So it's overall a very good class, better than the Brawler in almost every way. Uh, I think the higher tiers of the Brawler class, their attack scales uh, better than the Ninjas, but the Ninjas have the far more favorable spread of attributes. Also, like the Ronin, they have an S rank in their premier weapon type, the Fists and he gains fist experience really quickly, especially because he gets counters a lot. He already has the third level fist skill, Lion's Roar, which we'll show that off if I get the chance. Last new character, and this one is mostly for flavor, because I'm going to tell you right now, this class is not a very good one, Lucille the Knight. Now knights are an interesting class in that they specialize in both sword play and magic. As you can see, they have a B rank in swords and a B rank in staves, and they learn magic spells uh, from an element uh, randomly picked upon generation. However, they do not do either of these things very well. As you can see, B ranks do not get you a whole lot of weapon experience, even though I've been having her do just as much fighting as Fu and Spike have, and those aptitudes are just atrocious. Nothing even touches 100, which means every single stat when they equip something is going to be below what it would actually give you for any other character. That said, the knight does have a positive attribute in that it learns all of the status buffing spells, and relatively early too. So while Lucille is going to have some killing problems, she's going to have a pretty good support role. So before we actually start off this chapter proper, I realized I hadn't really done much with the Dark Assembly, so the first thing I wanted to do was do one more promotion exam with Laharl to get the next bills. Let's see, these guys line up right in a way for us to hit them with Blazing Knuckle. And yeah, Laharl's got enough HP that he should be able to take these hits pretty well. And since they're all going to be around, positioned around me, I can just hit them with Blazing Knuckle again. That one zombie had a 50% fire resistance, so that's kind of annoying, but it's not too big a deal. Zombie Puke is a slightly annoying skill. It's not very powerful, but it can poison you. And honestly, the poison is probably the most these guys can do to Laharl, so I guess that's the sensible choice for them to make, but Blazing Knuckle still cuts through them pretty well. One more, and that should take them out. So promotion exams are kind of a strange mechanic because uh, you have to do them to get the higher level of bills rather than the bills just being unlocked via progression. And uh, this is uh, what's annoying about them is a mechanic later that you're going to be doing a lot of once you hit the post game resets your promotion exams. So you have to keep doing promotion exams constantly when you're in the post game to get the bills back. Kind of annoying. Anyways, let's check out the new bills we have. 
So we can now stock these stores with new inventory and eyewear, belts, and shoes. Shoes are very useful items that increase your speed stat and give you an additional point of move. And I like to usually have shoes on most of my characters, unless like the speed just really doesn't benefit them and they don't really need the extra move. Belts are uh, items we got a couple of, and I might have equipped one or two of my characters with them. They raise your power stat slightly, but slightly lower your defense. Probably the least useful of these items. Eyewear is items I've also gotten a couple of. They increase your hit stat, so very good for gun users and bow users. Now we haven't actually seen uh, Bill trying to be passed at the assembly, so we're going to try and pass more expensive stuff, because the equipment I have right now is just not good enough for what I want to do. And when you're in the assembly, you can bribe uh, the uh, senators that aren't exactly sure they want what you're uh, pushing. So you can only bribe from the inventory that you brought with you. So you can't access your storeroom. So I'm going to give that guy the quasi power belt. And now he's leaning yes, so he's more likely to vote yes. More expensive stuff is a pretty routine bill that you have to pass, so it tends to have a pretty high chance of being passed. But as you can see there, I had bad luck and it got rejected. So when you get rejected, you just have to go back and uh, try again. Now, I could have tried to persuade by force there, and that would have put me in a fight against every senator that said nay. And they're kind of tough at this point in the game, so I don't really want to risk fighting them. Oh man, I'm having awful luck. Well, I guess we're just going to have to hold off on more expensive stuff, because uh, I don't have the mana to keep trying to pass that bill. Luckily, if I recall correctly, I picked up some... Uh, looks like I sold the bronze sword for my... Nope, there it is. Bronze sword, slightly stronger than a sword breaker. Except, uh, I need to equip this real quick. So now that we've got a level 10 weapon, we can go to the new area, Dinero Palace. It does sound pretty rich. So, uh, Laharl has uh, put his days of being a bowman behind, so we're just going to pass that off to Helena. And start Dinero Palace proper. And it'll give me a chance to show off my new teammates. So, Dinero Palace, pretty swanky looking pa place with a uh, golden pavement. pavement. Let's see what uh, these guys are capable of. All pretty weak to ice. And I'm looking for a particular one. Okay, so in the uh, part 5.5, I uh, sh uh, talked about the half damage bug, and that was kind of a bad map to show it off in because it doesn't really give you a good feel of how much it affects the damage. So this guy has the double resist stat, so let's see how much that damage they take in comparison, because the other guy doesn't. Yeah, as you can see, huge difference. Not only did the damage get halved, he, he has the boosted resist stat, and the calculation for damage is uh, done after the damage is already halved. So, very annoying bug in the story mode. Now, I, did, I didn't mention this before, uh, Guts has the Arms Master on his gun. And the reason I have Guts ha holding onto the Arm Master right now, Arms Master, is because uh, guns unlock a character class, but they unlock it at 30 mastery. So I need to get to level 30 with guns before I can unlock this class. Also, there's Rapid Fire, the level 3 gun skill. I unlocked it off screen. And it takes quite a while without an arms master, so I'm going to be having Guts use it for most of the game to keep his weapon levels pretty high, so when I actually make an effort to grind out the levels for the uh, new class, it'll be pretty easy for him since he's already pretty high. And like I mentioned in previous videos, uh, Rapid Fire is a fire-based gun skill, so it does extra damage against those weak to those weak against fire. Let's just get everyone deployed. Now I've got Lucille equipped with a sword right now, and one thing you can do in this game is you can actually switch your equipment on the fly. I can equip her with the staff and still take my turn, but you can only do this before you've actually taken an action this turn, so I can only do it once a turn. Now magic is uh, pretty nice in this game. The way magic works is that 
for your staff levels, you get additional range, and each level of the spell, you get additional range and additional area. So at level one, uh, it only hits one space, but at level two, you see I can hit that diagonal space. And by positioning the spell properly, I can actually hit someone I otherwise would not be able to by using that diagonal uh, spell. And, uh, oh, there's something else I was going to mention. Yes, uh, the maximum range that spellcasters get is really good. When your staff levels is high enough to reach it, you get an additional range of... Do I have a better spear in my inventory? I'm just thinking about that. Nope. You have an additional range of uh, five from your staff mastery, or rather four from your staff mastery. The maximum of staff mastery is four, and the highest you can get with your spell is five. Combined, you get a range of nine, so very uh, good ranged fighters. The half damage bug hor uh, blech, hurts their story viability. But uh, magic users are still very powerful, and once they decide to ditch the idea of having like enemies arbitrarily be better at resisting spells, uh, spellcasters are far and away like one of the best classes in future Disgaea titles. Actually, that uh, brings me to an interesting point with the Knight class. If you're playing Disgaea 2, the Knight class got buffed significantly, and it actually ended up becoming one of the best classes in the game by a pretty wide margin, honestly. It's one of my favorite classes in Disgaea 2. So I haven't actually had a chance to show off uh, Fu's skills yet, so we'll have her take out one of these guys. And there's Skull Splitter. And yeah, pretty good damage. Uh, what Erdrick was doing before I benched him, uh, Fu's already matching, and Erdrick was at level 10 when I benched him, so Fu's already like making up the difference quite quickly. So yeah, with Flan having learned all the spells, she uh, has very good coverage and can hurt quite a few people. Very useful character. I'm going to be having uh, the new guys get some kills just because they, uh... I wanted to get them up to level 7, but it was getting kind of tedious, so I decided to, you know, it's... Uh, level 6 is good enough for this. These guys, uh, most of them were just level 5. And there's Perspective screwing me up. There we go. Ooh, we got slippers! I'm going to equip that onto somebody. Who would benefit the most from it? I'm just going to hand it off to Spike because he has 110% aptitude with speed, so he'd get the most benefit out of those slippers. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Uh, prizes. I got a bunch of prizes. Oh, wow. Okay, so I got the next two upgrades to the uh, emblem type uh, equipment. The Dark Rosary and the Devil Ring. So I'm going to hand the Devil Ring to Laharl. Give the Dark Rosary to Flan. And uh, that'll do it, I guess. Just equipping that onto Aetna for extra HP. One thing you can do if you want to get the uh, HP and SP values up at the hospital is uh, just repeatedly equip and de equip. Uh, the HP boosting and SP boosting items. You need a lot of money to take advantage of it fully, but it's still a pretty good way if you want to get the best rewards really early. Okay, I believe there's a story segment with this next level.
I suppose I didn't need to be quiet during that because there's no voice acting, but oh well. But a little bit of backstory on the printies, which was nice. So let's see. A new enemy type here, the Manticore. Mm, decently powerful, but not really any stronger than the dragon we've already fought. Priest. Eh, most of these guys aren't too tough. So this is a, a panel called No Entry, and what No Entry turns these uh, Geo effects into is a wall. So when there's a No Entry panel in effect, you cannot walk past any blue panels that it may be on. I explained that really poorly, and I apologize. Basically, no entry makes a wall. And have a. Let's see. Can I do the attack? Yes, I can. What about Skull Splitter? Oh, Skull Splitter because it's stronger. Just have them take their actions and then get the rest of my characters out. So yeah, I think that's a good demonstration on how axes uh, compare to spears, because Fu did way more damage than Etna there. Didn't really need the team attack, but I guess it's nice. So I get the feeling that ninjas have a hidden ability that actually boosts their evasion, because even when they're like out leveled and the enemy's hit stat either matches or outdoes their uh, speed stat, they still do dodge an awful lot. Anyways, I should be able to cherry tap this guy with a fire spell. There we go. What's this guy weak to? And he's got a regular resist stat. Both of these guys have regular resist stats. Get used to me checking the enemy's stat screen before I cast a spell, because that half damage bug just pops up a lot. I believe I said this in part 5.5, but uh, generally it'll be like every one in four enemies that have it. But it can be slightly more, it can be slightly less, but you can be guaranteed that at least one enemy is going to be afflicted with it. So these uh, eight people I have on the field right now, they're going to be my team for most of the game, actually. It's going to be a long time before we get any new characters to uh, diversify the roster. And we'll just have Flan take out this Geo effect. I could very easily have Flan just hog up a ton of kills because she has uh, an advantage over everything with all her elemental spells. Let's see, is this guy weak to fire? Yes he is! I really like guns in this game, not only because they're stronger than they are in future Disgaea games, but uh, just the elemental physical attacks that they have is really, really nice. Because of the problems that magic faces in the story mode, the fact that I can just get some reliable damage in on uh, enemies with elemental weaknesses is something I really appreciate about the guns. Yeah, that guy was afflicted with the half damage bug, definitely. If you ever want to know if someone is just affected with that bug, you can just tell from the really low damage you do. I've had, like, decently strong characters just do, like, zero damage because of that bug, even when they had the elemental advantage. And I had Utna already take her turn, didn't realize it. Well. Got made these guys, so may as well utilize them in the main game as well. And get a poison arrow lined up. And this should take the guy out. Or maybe not, because uh, Spike did a lot. Oh no! You know, I said uh, bows aren't particularly powerful, and Helene is not doing a good job of exemplifying that, but. A big part of that is because she has an item-worlded weapon, and item-worlded weapons are just very powerful. Compared to the stuff that you can buy, like if I actually took the uh, Gate Guardian's uh, advice and just 
did a common sword in the item world, it would be stronger than the sword breaker by a pretty decent margin, honestly. Let's see, both of these guys are weak to fire. So whenever Lucille runs out of her MP, I usually switch her over to- oh man, half damage bug. I usually switch her over to a sword so that she can uh, hit things a little better. A unique ability that the knight has, and it's actually one of the few classes in this game that actually has a class-specific ability, is that it can follow up regular melee attacks with one of the spell attacking spells from its uh, spell list. It doesn't happen very often, and you need to have the MP required to use the spell, but it's, it is an ability. I wouldn't say it's a useful one, because you'll be using a sword most often when you get it, and uh, that'll be reducing the effectiveness of your damage quite a bit. Okay, punch him, sky lunge, there we go. Ah, goddammit! Okay. Rearrange this slightly. I feel kind of silly for uh, missing that, though. And did I... No, I didn't. I was going to have him rapid fire. There we go. Sometimes the specifics of uh, attacks, you know, obstruction areas, can be a little annoying with them. This uh, song playing in the background is probably one of my favorite in the game. And favorites in the game, and I mix up my plurals all the time. Hey, you can go back in the base panel, or next to the base panel, whatever. Uh, I guess Fawn will take this guy out. So the difference between fire and mega fire is that mega fire is about twice as strong, but also twice as expensive. And that's basically how the tiers of spells work. I can do it. <laughs> There's uh, Spike's high speed at play there. Out of all the characters in this game, you're going to be seeing that miss message the most with him. Okay, so let's use Tiger Charge. As you've probably noticed, the third level of Fist Kill, Lion's Roar, has a very high MP cost, so it's going to be a while before you can actually use it. And pretty raid. Let's see if I can get this one to actually display properly in this video. Dead. I'm looking at the capture window and it looks fine, but whenever I edit it in Adobe Premiere, oh man, that was atrocious. Yeah, pretty raid, one of the weaker character skills. Oh wow. That is probably feeling pretty embarrassed right there. Alright, so who among this group is the closest to a level up? That would be Etna, and she really needs it, so let's go into her. She just barely got that. Come on, that was a cleric. It's not, not particularly tough. This is the big problem with spears, is that while their damage is slightly higher than fists, and I do mean very slightly, uh, it's just like Etna's combined problems of having a lower strength stat kind of makes it hard to use. I, and I noticed when I was doing my item worlding, I uh, got better spears. I should have equipped that before the video started. But I think we've accomplished enough for this video. Actually, hold on. One more thing. I will get this bill to pass. We're heading back to the Dark Assembly. Oh, wow. I haven't been using Laharl for anything. And he's the only one who's promoted enough to actually take the exam. Never mind. I'll do it later. Not that uh, having exp more expensive stuff right now is a huge deal. I'd probably blow my money on the first couple things I bought anyways, because stuff in this game is expensive and you don't get a lot of money. But I think we've done enough for now. So I'll save over one of my numerous backup saves here and call it a video. I hope you enjoyed watching, and I hope you have a nice day. Until next time, see ya.